That's the same panel used on the more expensive Samsung Ative Book 9 Plus. Same exact panel. Panel is made by Samsung. We'll talk about that more later. Anyway, super wonderful high resolution. They have a nice little sample desktop image that brags about that very fact right there. Updated with Intel Haswell 4th generation Intel Core CPUs on here. You can get it with an i5, an i7, even an i3 on Lenovo's website. Those stores seem to be going with the i5 and the i7 options. 4 gigs of RAM, or you can order it with 8 gigs of RAM, 128 gig SSD, or you can get higher capacity SSDs. Now, the, the big value for people in the United States, if you want the i7 with 8 gigs of RAM and the 256 gig SSD, would currently be with Best Buy, who is the uh, launch retailer for this product, other than Lenovo's own web website. And they're selling that configuration for $1,200, which is certainly attractive right in terms of pricing again now if you go order that on lenovo's website you might have to pay more money even with their various coupons and discounts that only seem to cloud the issue of how much lenovo's products actually cost typically you're going to pay a bit more than you would from best buy one thing that you would get though is clementine orange in the i7 something that best buy doesn't stock this is available in gray or clementine orange love that clementine orange really really pretty looking thing but maybe a little too flashy for some of you that's why we have the basic silver stayed looking model right here with the black contrast if you notice from the original yoga and from the idea pad use series where the yoga derived from in terms of overall look it's slimmed down that's something that lenovo is doing the tapered look is really popular it makes it look thinner it makes it maybe a little bit easier to handle so Instead of the squared off kind of book look, we have a taper here. You still have the contrasting colors. It's still the distinctive Lenovo kind of look there. Nobody's going to mistake this for a MacBook Air. But, like I said, not as squared off. And this is what the charger looks like. A little different from the usual narrow, narrow power brick, but otherwise the same. You've got plenty of cord plugging in here and this style connector right there. Yoga 2 Pro charges pretty quickly. Here we have a USB 3.0 port, micro HDMI, and an SDXC compatible card slot. The card will stick about halfway out, so you probably don't want to leave it in there all the time when you're transiting the machine. On the other side, we have a USB 2.0 port and our combo audio jack. So if you're wondering what you're getting with the more expensive models, and we'll have some smackdowns, say, with the Samsung T Book 9 Plus with the same display, for example. Here you have a mix of some metal and some plastic finishes. And instead of getting two USB 3.0 ports, you get one 2.0 and one 3.0. Another important difference also is by default, this comes with single band Wi-Fi only on the 2.4 gigahertz band. And we really like to see dual band Wi-Fi and we keep dinging Lenovo with their IdeaPad series, which this is really a member of, for not going with dual band when even smartphones always have dual band Wi-Fi these days. That's something else that you'll get on more expensive models by default. Though on Lenovo's website, they do also list a 2x2 two two option for Wi-Fi, which should get you both bands. But in stores, you're probably only going to find it single band. Volume controls are on the side right here. We also have a rotation lock button over here in case you don't want it to rotate. Power button's also on the side. You can see it pulsing. It lets you know if it's asleep. So that's handy if you're using it in tablet mode. You don't have to open it up to get to those controls. Bottom is held in place by lots of little teeny, teeny Torx screws. This is our ventilation over here, obviously. Stereo speakers are at the top. Hence, yes, with Dolby Audio, they sound pretty good. So if you take off these screws, and they're all visible. There's nothing hidden under rubber feet or anything like that. You can actually take the bottom off. RAM is not upgradable. It's soldered on. The SSD is a standard M SATA drive, so that's pretty easy to upgrade if you wish to do that afterwards. The wireless card doesn't use the standard PCI Express Mini connector it uses the NGFF connector so it's a little hard to find wireless cards there is an Intel Wi-Fi AC module that would fit in this uh, but for those of you thinking oh, I'm just going to upgrade it right away make sure you get the one with the right connector and we'll show you a shot of what the internals look like so you can see for yourself from the last generation this has also lost a little bit of weight 3.06 pounds so uh, very typical ultrabook weight there, not a little on the heavy side. Makes it easier to hold and handle, and that's good in case you want to use this in tablet mode. Goodness knows people complain enough about a two pound tablet. Well, you got a three pound tablet here, but still, it is usable, and obviously, you can rest it on the desk. And Lenovo doesn't think you should just use this as a tablet, it does all the yoga y things just like the last gen. It has the same nice, big, sturdy hinge over here as well. 
So you can use it in a variety of positions. Standard notebook, of course. But you can flip this guy over and you can tent mode it, as they call it, using it like that. Perchance handy for presentations. You can close it up completely and use it as a tablet like so. This does not have a digital pen or active digitizer, no Entrig, no Wacom in here, so you digital artists, this is not the one for you. There will be a ThinkPad Yoga, slightly different model that will have a Wacom pen option, and of course there's other competing brands that offer that too. Lastly, there's good old-fashioned presentation mode that we've seen on several models. Now, the Sony Bio Flip 13 has that as well, and you can do it like that. Presentations at work, showing movies to your bored kids, whatever it is, it's handy. One thing to note, just as with the last yoga, the keys will face down. So you want to put it on a clean table so it doesn't pick up yesterday's lunch crumbs and get all gummed up inside your keyboard. And if you're laying it on your lap, you will feel the keys. Now the keys are deactivated, so you don't have to worry about accidentally inputting stuff. No effect whatsoever, you're safe there. And Lenovo does sell a little slider sleeve that you can put over this if you find it discomforting or you do tend to have dirty tables. We don't always have control about where we bring our laptops to and put them down. Goodness knows if you're going to Starbucks, for example, yeah, yeah, you don't even want to think about that. And while we're talking about the keyboard here, it is in all of its glory, the usual Lenovo smile-shaped keys and make a very nice keyboard. Important addition here for the Yoga Pro 2 is finally we have backlighting. It light, lights the letters themselves and there's a gentle ring of white light around each key. So, usable in the dark, good times. Standard layout here, really nothing to note. Uh, your FN keys by default actually do control your multimedia settings so you don't have to hit the FN key first to control brightness. I know a lot of people like that. If you want to toggle the Backlighting on on the keyboard manual, you can see right here, you hit FN because it's masked in orange, and the space bar, which is pretty typical for Lenovo ThinkPad products too. Fairly large trackpad here, works well, multi-touch, single-touch gestures, nice and roomy, and the keyboard deck has the usual soft-touch, kind of rubbery, slightly textured surface that we saw on the last Yoga. The outside also has a soft-touch finish, but this one is definitely more grippy. Your hands will not slide off of this. One complaint I have about the keys is they are very slick surfaces here, so it's easy for your fingers to kind of slide off. I'd like a little bit more of a matte texture on the keys. Not a big deal. In terms of travel, because they make this so darn thin, there's not a lot of room for travel. Now the keyboard is recessed a little bit here, so you can see we're dipping in. It's a little hard to see the key profile, but still, it's not a huge amount of key travel. It's still a very nice, very tactile keyboard, and the keys are damped, so they feel very nice when you use them, and they're not overly loud. Uh, but this is not going to be something like your ThinkPad X220 kind of experience in typing, just because there is well, less travel there. But it's not too bad. Certainly, as Ultrabooks go, it's a very nice keyboard. Once we open it up, it's business as usual. 13.3-inch Ultrabook. No compromises there in terms of usability. Capacitive home button there, does a little haptic when you press that button. Running Windows 8.1, our machine. We did not have to upgrade it out of the box. It actually shipped that way. Fast and responsive Intel Core CPUs, as I mentioned, fourth generation. We have the i5-4200U, 1.6 gigahertz with Turbo Boost. You can also get it with the i7-4500U if you want. Our model has 4 gigs of RAM and 128 gig SSD. Supports 10 points of capacitive multi-touch, and it has Bluetooth 4.0, and your usual 720p webcam sitting up here. That's okay, nothing superb, but rarely do we see superb on laptops. It's a shame, but that's the truth. One thing I applaud Lenovo for is not bloating the machine too, too much. Of course, there's a recovery partition on here. Obviously, there's Windows-related apps, Lenovo's one key recovery, and a couple of their value-added applications, but still... Take a look right here, and this is after we've installed Office and some graphics programs, benchmarking programs. We still have over 72 gigs free. We started out with about 76 gigs free out of our 128 gig SSD. That's better than the industry average, where we're seeing 60 to 65 gigs free out of the box. So thank you, Lovo, Lenovo, for not putting too much junk on this. Just like the Samsung, a T-Book 9 Plus with the same panel, this has very wide color gamut. 97% of sRGB. Excellent, excellent stuff right there. And for Adobe RGB, we're also doing pretty well, too. Right here, you can see we have 75%. So that puts it among the best displays, which is the T-Book 9 Plus and 
Sony Vio Pro 13, Sony Vio Duo 13, and the Sony Vio Flip 13 all share these very high numbers. 350 nits of brightness as well, nice black levels on the display. It's an excellent display. Now some of you have heard about the whole yellow issue or yellow gate issue with the Yoga 2 Pro. When it came out, had a problem displaying yellows. They looked kind of mustardy rather than being vibrant pale yellow. Now the Samsung a book 9 Plus with the same display has that problem when it's unplugged from power, but when you plug it in, your yellows turn all nice and natural. That wasn't the case with the Yoga 2 Pro. But Lenovo, well, I got a hand to them. They listen to customers, and the thing has only been out for a couple of weeks in limited availability, and they've already put out a BIOS update to update the firmware and an energy manager update that take care of the mustardy yellows and bring them in line with much more nice normal yellow. So we're going to look at a couple of distinctive yellow things so you can see for yourself. So the distinctive, somewhere between canary and lemon yellow Nokia Lumia 1020 is always a good test for displaying yellows. And as you can see, they don't look mustard, they don't look icky, they look yellow like they should. And now we'll go for SpongeBob SquarePants because a lot of you are familiar with sponge, what SpongeBob should look like. And here we have a whole lot of SpongeBob, and SpongeBob's looking pretty much like SpongeBob should look. He maybe could look a little bit more canary, but overall, nothing putrid and mustard like the way this was before the firmware update that we applied. So, lovely. That update is available to everybody. It's on Lenovo's website. If you get one of these, go get it you'll have nicer yellows. Has not impacted battery life for us per se either. This runs for about six hours on a charge without any kind of draconian power management. So that means with brightness set to 60%, which is pretty darn bright given this is a 350 nit display, Wi-Fi on and active. So if you push the power management and a mix of productivity use, say you're using this in a classroom or at work where you're mostly using MS Office, something like that, you could probably get even closer to 7 if you're willing to set the display pretty dim and maybe use the energy manager and set it down to one of the most power frugal settings. You can see our crystal disk mark SSD speed score is here. Pretty much typical of an MSATA SSD. Not bad at all. Ours happens to be a Samsung manufactured SSD. And in terms of synthetic benchmarks on PC Mark 7, our Core i5 model scored 4737, which is pretty much where it should be in the playing field. W Prime computing Pi at 22.96 seconds. Again, that's par for the course and where it should be in the field. This has dual channel RAM in it, so for those of you who are worrying about integrated graphics performance, because this has Intel HD 4400 integrated graphics, no dedicated graphics option on this, and generally speaking, not on any Ultrabook, that's going to help performance a little bit. So for those of you who are going to be using Photoshop, yes, it can handle Photoshop. No, it's not going to lag. Yes, you can play games like Civ 5 on this. Uh, Battlefield 4 at high settings? Absolutely not. This is an Ultrabook. That's not what it's made for. Uh, but World of Warcraft on low auto detect settings? Yeah, it'll do that fine. Now, in terms of looks, this is a fine looking product. It's not flashy. I don't think it's really designed to incite consumer electronics lust in you. It's just not super duper exciting, but it's thin, it's light, it gets the job done. We'll compare it to some more expensive models so you can see what the difference looks like. Handily, we have our MacBook Air latest generation right here. All metal, cold to the touch this time of year, very slim. It's going to be fancier looking, but you know, you're paying more money for, for the looks too. About the same size, just a difference in thickness. And now we have our also very cold metal Samsung AT Book 9 Plus running with the same display, also the same Haswell inside. Again, a more expensive machine. This is around twelve to thirteen hundred dollars with comparable specs. So you're paying two or three hundred dollars more for the Samsung. More styling, the sculpted sides, the full metal. You get the idea. We can have a smackdown between these two if you guys are interested in that. So we're going to test out some video and audio playback. Our audio is at 67% right now, and you'll see how loud that is. And we'll take a look at our Sony Vio Flip 13 review, so we can play that video. An obvious competitor to the Yoga that also has presentation mode and tablet mode. Full 1080p. This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and we're going to look at one of the nice. audio. Windows 8 the table PCs is vibrating right now. This is the Sony Vio nice. Flip. We have the 13 inch model, and sure, it looks like a tablet right now. 13.3 inch display, full HD. 
So obviously, very nice for multimedia too. Great set of speakers that Lenovo put on there. They do beat Sony when it comes to audio quality, I have to say, and it's right up there with the a T-Book 9 Plus almost. The T-Book 9 Plus has a little bit more bass, but still really nice audio experience. And to be a little bit more interesting, since we have our super high resolution display, we're gonna play a Sony Bravia 4K test video so you can see what it looks like playing really high resolution stuff. Dang, those speakers are good, but that is just luscious looking. Very, very attractive. And obviously the CPU is up to handling 4K video playback. More importantly, how about text? Right now you can see our desktop, and it's pretty easy to read stuff, isn't it? By default, the, the, the machine will launch with 3200 by 1800 desktop resolution and 200% scaling in Windows 8.1, which makes everything pretty readable and sort of like using a 1080p display. But I can tell you that all the little fonts and the labels here, they are sharper. You will notice the difference. I, I thought, you know, at first I thought 3200 by 1800, it's kind of crazy. It's all marketing, but... Once you get used to this and you start using it, and the same thing happened because I have an T-Book 9 Plus, when I go back to full HD 1920 by 1080 at 13 inches, everything looks like a little fuzzy. And that used to be like so bloody awesome to have a full HD display. So yes, if, you, if you're worrying that, oh, I have bad eyes, maybe everything's going to be too tiny. Granted, every application is not DPI aware with Windows 8.1 scaling. So you may run into some that have TD menus. But overall, for anything that does support Windows scaling well, it's actually sharper text that you're going to get. And you, know, you can zoom more if you want. And of course, you can set this to run at 1920 by 1080 if you want as well, and with even more zoom on it to make things really big. But I find that this is quite readable, and I don't have awesome eyes anymore. As a tablet, it has fairly good viewing angles. It's a little bit hard to tell because obviously glare is a big factor. You can see the ceiling and everything else in there too. And that's just a problem with touchscreens. They generally are glossy. You're probably going to want to use it on the table. Like I said, it, it is nice to use as a tablet. It is fun, uh, even if you can't use anything other than a capacitive stylus with it. But three pounds is a little bit of weight in your hands, but that's a problem with all the three-pound convertibles that are on the market. In terms of fan noise, there's just about none. You'll hear the fan kicking on quietly every once in a while. And we're real happy because idea pads used to have kind of over-vigorous, slightly noisy fans. This does not. It, it has not been an annoyance. Certainly, it's much better than the Sony Vio Flip 13, which is a real Hoover vacuum cleaner. Noisy, 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 noisy. And while we don't recommend that you do this at home, it really just... It, it's just a statement to the versatility of this product, the number of ways that you can use it. As ever, the Yoga is the perfect machine for those of you who really need an Ultrabook or a laptop first, but you don't want to be left out of the tablet rage, and you like all the versatility of all the positions you can use this guy in. And beyond its versatility, and who knows in the end if you're even going to use all these modes, right? It's really exciting at first, but it's still going to be a darn solid Ultrabook, and for the money, it really is a top pick. Obviously, there are, there are machines out there with even more features, the dual-band Wi-Fi, the metal casing, and that's why there's products for everybody. You can get the Sony Flip 13, which is a stunning, gorgeous, high-class, wow, makes you want to lust for it kind of look. But for those of you who just want really good internals, a good solid value for your money, it's really hard to beat the Yoga 2 Pro. So that's the Lenovo Yoga 2 Pro. It yogas. It does everything. As you saw, all sorts of neat modes here. Tablet mode, tent mode, mirror mode when it hits the light, granted. But anyway, for, for the price, this has got to be one of the best Windows 8 convertibles you can get. If you're looking for something that can act as a full Ultrabook, but also have the versatility to be a tablet when you need it, do presentation modes and more, Yoga 2 Pro is it. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to visit our website for the full written review with benchmarks and more, and hit that subscribe button.